arpeggios from the Wednesday cello scene are impossible. That is what I thought, so I put up a $250 TikTok challenge to see if anyone could actually do it. My name is Jeremy Tai, and this is how I was proven wrong and lost $250 to TikTok. The story of this challenge also includes lots of intrigue, exciting last minute submissions, and plot twists, so buckle up for a wild ride. Time for some important context if you are out of the loop. The Netflix series Wednesday premiered on November 23rd, 2022, and it was a smash hit. In the very first episode, the main character Wednesday Adams plays a cello version of Painted Black by the Rolling Stones. This rendition was particularly intriguing to me as a professional cellist as it features some impossible cello playing, one of the more egregious examples being these arpeggios. Now you might be asking yourself, why are these arpeggios impossible? To put it bluntly, the arpeggios were not written with the cello in mind. There are so many large and awkward intervals that are problematic for how the cello is set up, and at the same time, there are plenty of reductions that would make the passage much easier to play while retaining the same musical concept. In fact, most people's covers on TikTok and elsewhere have made these kinds of reductions to this specific 4 measure passage. I initially put up a $25 bounty on TikTok for anyone who could play these exact notes of the arpeggio section. When no one stepped up after a few days, I decided to raise the bounty 10 times to $250 and also posted the challenge to more social media platforms, including the International Cello Society Facebook group. This time around, there were many more takers. In total, there are 7 submissions received before the deadline and in this video, I will review each one of them and crown a winner. Our first submission comes from Peter Osvaf. For his full-time job, he's actually a math professor at Princeton University, but loves to play the cello in his spare time. Let's take a listen. Let's start with the good stuff. I thought that the last five notes are pretty clear, and the left hand stability and shifts are solid. However, Intonation sounded very sharp and kept getting sharper as he played. The string crossings are a bit messy and as a result, two strings are often played at the same time. Given these issues, Peter's submission does not qualify for the prize, but thank you so much for trying to challenge out. I hope you had fun. Next up is Paul Oliver. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Here are my thoughts. I liked it. Overall, there was a pretty clean bow stroke. I especially appreciated that in the first couple measures, Paul lifted unneeded fingers in the left hand. This is a great way to reduce tension. On the other hand, the intonation is about 85% there. In particular, the last five notes are off, but Paul does use a pretty unique solution for the fingering at the end, which I appreciated. Paul's submission does not qualify for the prize, but thank you so much for your work and practice. Next up, we have Cornelius Zerbo's submission. Let's take a listen. I thought his playing was quite good. Cornelius has a very clean bow stroke, and the beginning was very in tune. There was good rhythmic integrity and shaping throughout the arpeggios. However, Cornelius does play a wrong note. I'll put up the score and highlight which note he got wrong. Furthermore, the intonation at the end got sharp, and the last five notes were messy. Given these issues, Cornelius does not qualify for the prize, but thank you for giving it your best shot. Up next, we have Darabella Music. Let's take a listen. Oh man, I wish the sound quality of the video was a bit better. My first impression was, wow, this guy has giant hands. This is truly a unique fingering that is specific to cellists with large hands. The string crossings were very well prepared overall. The intonation was just a bit sharp, but it was 90% there, quite good actually. On the other hand, the bow stroke was uneven. The up bows are weaker, which compromises the rhythmic integrity. Furthermore, the last five notes tone was a bit too scratchy. While Darabello does not qualify for the prize, he is definitely the closest one yet. Now, it's time to introduce the three finalists, the submissions that I consider good enough to have successfully accomplished the mission. 
All three finalists did excellent work, and choosing a single winner to win my money will be extremely difficult. First up, we have Esther. Esther was the first person to step up and play the arpeggios, and she definitely set an extremely high bar for everyone else. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Esther's clarity and rhythm are excellent. I thought the string crossings are impeccable for most of the passage. Her fingering choices are entirely impractical. I honestly don't know how she does it, but somehow Esther makes it work. Esther's tone is also the most neutral of everyone's submissions, which many people seem to like. The intonation is solid, though the last five notes fall off just a bit. At the very end, the string crossing between the G and C strings are slightly muddled, and Esther does actually miss a note because of this. But in the end, Esther's submission does qualify for the prize, and thank you so much for your hard work. It sounded really great. Up next is Olivia. This is one of my last minute submissions. I received her video file privately at 11pm, just one hour before the deadline. Let's take a listen. This was very impressive. I thought Olivia had an incredibly clean bow stroke and string crossings. The intonation is solid, and probably the most in tune of all the competitors. Olivia also uses a unique fingering. She actually chooses not to use the A string at all for the first two measures, which I thought was a very creative solution that worked well for her. Olivia's playing was also very musical, and she was able to show a clear shape encompassing the four measure phrase. However, the third measure was a bit too aggressive on the bow, and she struggles with string crossings a bit on this specific measure. In the end, Olivia's mission also qualifies for the prize, and I am amazed by how good it is. Finally, we have Chris, who came in with a very last minute entry. I received his file at 11.56pm, just 4 minutes before the deadline. Let's take a listen. Impressive work. I thought that Chris probably had the cleanest string crossings of all the competitors. I also really liked the confident tone quality that he had. However, the third measure dynamics were a bit weaker. There were also some intonation issues like in the second measure when he shifts up to a new position in the left hand. In the end, Chris's submission also qualifies for the prize. I thought he did excellent work. I'm going to play all three finalist videos back to back now so you can compare them yourself. Only one can win. So this will be very tough to decide. Now it's time for the big question. Who won my challenge? Now at this point, my good friend Zlatimir Fung was very invested in the entire saga. You may know Zlatimir as the winner of the 2019 Tchaikovsky competition, the most prestigious classical music competition in the world. I had sent him these videos to help me review and we both agreed that it was extremely challenging to decide who would be the winner. I'm going to let Zlatimir take over and explain our thought process and why it was so difficult to adjudicate. Hey everyone, it's Vladimir Fung. So when my good friend Jeremy sent me these four bars from Wednesday, I took one look at them and I thought, holy moly, this is impossible. Uh, so I was all the more impressed when we started to receive a number of submissions, incredible performances of, of this seemingly impossible passage. Of course, we were looking at things like intonation, the stroke, the quality of the string crossings, the overall tempo. Uh, but personally, I was really impressed in particular with a lot of the imagination and creativity that went into some of these fingerings that I could never do personally. Uh, and also a lot of the enthusiasm and energy. Uh, some of these recordings were really digging into the music. And uh, 
we had a great time listening to all of them. I was deeply impressed, and in the end it was a difficult decision, but Jeremy will tell you a little bit more about what we decided. Vladimir was so impressed with the submissions that he voluntarily put up his own money for the prize. Thanks to Vladimir's generosity, we are able to award two first prize winners of the challenge, and they are Esther and Olivia. These cellists will receive $250 each. I shall be awarding Esther $250, and Vladimir is awarding Olivia $250. In addition, thanks to a mysterious last-minute Venmo contributor, I am able to award Chris, our runner-up, a $50 prize. Right now on the screen, I will be showing proof of payment. I hope you enjoyed the story of this challenge. It was inspirational to watch the entire cello community come together and figure out this devilishly difficult passage. The amount of creativity and hard work all the competitors put in was incredible and truly humbled me, both emotionally and financially. <laughs> I too have learned a valuable lesson, never underestimate the power of the cello community. Thank you so much for watching. I need to give a special shout out to Vladimir for being so generous. He really didn't have to do this, but because he did, we are able to award prizes in the way that is most satisfying. Please give him a follow on his Instagram. He makes incredible videos of cello passages that he is working on while preparing to perform around the world. Thanks again to all the competitors. Links to their social media will be in the description below, so please check it out.